myself yet. I did, but I'm going to win. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to win so tomorrow. So, but we're going to be talking about, um, like I said, fats and how do we get good fats and why are they good? And we actually, Monique and I just listened. The reason why we're running a little bit late, we were watching a lecture a little bit about fat and breast milk. And I didn't know this, but it was showing that women who consumed higher amounts of fat in their diet while they were breastfeeding actually produced breast milk that had a higher caloric um, output, which helped sustain their babies. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just the amount of milk they were producing. It was actually Thank you, the, the amount of... Um, the amount of calories and specifically fat they were taking in and gave those calories to the baby which needed them at the time mm -hmm. so um, which is very profound because you, you that's something that you find to be an issue correct yes so we're talking about fats and we are gonna have to uh, I am having technical difficulties with my personal one so keep talking I'm okay sorry. so the other thing oh so Dania said that she experienced that was I on about with with having enough calories and fat in your breast milk which is really important so when we're talking about this you know Montique and I this way. we can share it yes okay. Montique and I we span the lifespans of you know she takes care of a lot of moms and babies I help her I kind of support her in taking care of babies as well but that's kind of her expertise in what she does and so she's talking to a lot of moms about breast milk but then we go all the way further into you know as adults what are we supposed to be doing for our kids what are we supposed to be doing so fats are going to help with brain it's going to help with um, the balance of making sure we get the right fats because fats can be inflammatory they can be um, what we we're afraid of fats in this culture it's getting better but we're afraid of fats because um, we're afraid that if we eat fat, we're going to get fat. That's one of them. And it's really funny how that's what we associate with fat more than even our internal health. But the internal health portion of that is that we think fats are going to cause placking in our arteries and cause us to have heart attacks and strokes. And can that happen? Absolutely. But what's really interesting, there's a group of fats that are anti-inflammatory and they are going to help battle that and help with that. So when we're even talking about eating enough fat for breast milk breast milk and all those types of things, we're also talking about eating the right kind of fats, right? So you can't just go say, oh, go eat steaks all of the time. I'm having a com this conversation. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> With a friend of mine Sorry. about fats and about milk and about those types of things. And so we're going to give you kind of a rundown of how we get good fats in the diet. We need like all this technical stuff. We going do, on. but it was my fault because I couldn't get the thing set up right. But we got so it. So we do need, uh, we do need to. It should be going. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. We're gonna call foul right now. Hold on. <laughs> technical difficulties. Technical. Pause. 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 So that is one of the things that we're we're gonna be talking about. So we're gonna give you a list of fats that are good for you, and these fats help. Um, build brain function. It's going to help be anti-inflammatory, so it's going to help our cardiovascular system. Right. So it's going to actually decrease our um, our heart attack and stroke, um, and those all of those things. You got it. Yeah, we're gonna make it work. So I know we need. To, okay. I don't know if that's going to sit there, but hopefully it will. It will. We'll just be really Hi, everybody. Still. So we are on, coming on late, we are on several different things, but we are um, talking about fats. Today. Fats. Fats. So do fa and and then, good fats. And, and good bad fats. fats. And, and do fats then, make you fat? Yes and yes. no. And then some common this myths about This is my favorite fat. answer right. to everything when people ask me, when my students ask me, when my patients ask me, does this do this? Does you know, I say, it depends. Well, it's it is a good answer because it's the truthful answer, but it depends. So I mean, we the, can eat too much fat. One of the things that I will say, um, even talking about what Donia said about fats and breast milk, right? Because that's my favorite topic, um, is that you want to make sure that when you're increasing your fats that you are increasing healthy fats. And that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight. Because what I was told... 15 years ago was oh your milk's not fatty enough so you know just go out and 
eat ice cream or french fries or cheeseburgers, you know, because we consider those things as being fattening, which they are, right? So what I ended up doing was gaining a whole lot of weight, but my caloric, the amount of calories in my breast milk actually really didn't change. I just got fatter and my that's interesting the nutrients too. in my um, breast milk was, was not, you know, that that didn't work for me. So I will say that you want to make sure, especially when you are thinking of, you know, insulin resistance, because that's really kind of where this whole conversation, you know, came from. And a lot of the things that me and Dr. Crystal talk about um, surround insulin resistance, because most of us have some varying degree, you know, of, of Which- insulin insulin resistance blood sugar dysregulation right and we're going to talk about that one of our topics maybe in the next week or two yes and we'll talk about you know what it is and some different things that you can do um to to help to help with that but Mm -hmm. um so yeah just you want to make sure that you're getting healthy fats i'll let you go so i just wanted to make sure that i gave Yes. Instagram a chance to get it together. So healthy fat. So let's talk about the difference between an unhealthy and unhealthy fat and some sources. Okay. okay. So the different types of fats that you may be aware of is we're going to say saturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, monounsaturated fats, omega-3 fatty acids, essential fatty acids. What are all, all those things? What are all of those things? And so I kind of keep it really simple. And... So the one of the things that we don't get enough of, of as a culture is omega fatty acids or essential fatty acids. Omega, I meant to say essential. Essential fatty acids. And Donnie says flaxseed and avocados were her jam postpartum. Those are great. Plant-based mm-hmm. sources of fat are great. And um, flaxseed is going to be a great source of omega-3s. But we're going to talk about the difference between those animal sources. So if you're a vegan, vegetarian for various reasons, if you're not, you can kind of fit in. There's fats and everything, but I'm going to tell you why some of the animal sources are actually a little bit better sources of, of fats oh. than than the plants um, so out of out of all of those saturated fats should be limited most of the time those are going to be what we find typical in our steaks and our bacon which if I had to choose an animal one animal to eat the meat of it would be a pig <laughs> I'm just saying like bacon pork belly we were just talking about this pork belly is my favorites no but Vietnamese people we eat pork belly maybe not a lot I would like to eat it more than I do and it's melt in your mouth mouth fatty pork it, it is, is so good it's mushy it is good it melts in like your it. mouth it's and if it's from a sustainable source it can be health beneficial but you don't want to eat it every day right right so when you're talking about so, a sustainable source or even when you're talking about I was talking to my favorite farmer, Shama Garcia, and she has Holistic Homestead. If you are I want to go local visit her Tulsa, like she has the best. Let's take the kids chickens. Out there. We should. She's okay. got the best chickens, and she's got pigs and cows and all of the things and eggs and fruits and vegetables and stuff. But her whole farm is sustainable, and her, you know, all of her meat is going to be grass fed grass finished pasture pasture raised no pesticides loved on and all of the things right so when you're talking about like it it sounds crazy to me but like it really is like when you when you talk about storing stress and trauma and things in your cells how we talk about how that happens with people animals do it happens with animals as well so you know you really when you really start thinking about where your food comes from, you know, I was talking to Shama today and I was like, I don't want no stressed out, sad, you know, meat to feed my family. Like it, it, it doesn't it, taste the same. It does. doesn't. The no. meat that we have been getting from Shama tastes so different, even from the organic you get the meat chicken that I get. Her. I get chicken from her and I get The beef. chicken was good. I've gotten I get the chicken beef from her because you got me some last time. Mm-hmm. I get yes, chicken really and beef good. from her. So when when you're talking about those things or even, you know, I think I just saw um, Alex like bleep up really, really quick. But when you're talking about things, even um, like milk, right? So when you think Sorry. about... <laughs> Sorry. When you, when you think about <laughs> milk, right? Milk. I don't think milk is inherently bad. I have a no. friend that is from Africa where they like have cows and um, live somewhere where they have cows and they raise their cows and all of the things and they're not lactose intolerant. 
right? But then African American people here, we're all like prone to so I wonder if it's lactose more of an, intolerance. But I wonder if it's more of a lactose issue than it is a protein issue because lactose is the sugar that we can't right. and, and we don't a lot of on times as we get and this is a side note. We don't have the lactase enzyme to break down the lactose sugar as we get older. A lot of us don't. Asian Americans don't. I think it has to do Asians. with the processing of the, but the pro well of it because yes when I no. when I think about, I mean, I'm sure that there's something else to that. But when I think mm -hmm. about as a lactation consultant, and I see women that have mastitis, and I see what pumped mastitis milk looks like. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the fact that in America, we are consistently keeping these cows pregnant, right? And then you are milking them with the machine that we're not effectively removing, right, moms? You're not effectively removing milk from all over. So these cows are steadily getting mastitis because they have all this milk in stasis. So we have to dump them full of mastitis antibiotics. Is an, is an infection. It is an infection. Tissue. And it turns the milk red and pink and funky looking. And so then and you get like chunks that like come out and just think about that. You're steady pumping out of this cow this pus filled, infection filled milk that we have to keep giving them antibiotics for, and then you're straining out the globs of infected tissue that's in this milk, and then you're straining it, dyeing it, bleach, however they get it to be that beautiful white color that they get it to be, right? And all moms know that depending upon what you eat, your milk is going to change Mine was colors. Green a little bit. Yes, because you mm -hmm. eat a lot of green. Sometimes, yeah. Right? And so then when I think about that and I think about how we process cows, how we feed cows, how they get so much grain, right? That's not organic grain, a ton of corn, a ton of things that they really shouldn't be eating. And then we wonder why we react so poorly to. So I agree. Their milk. It's not, but see, that's what I think. That's not it's, the only it's not, thing. It's not just the lactose or the proteins in the milk. So the right. proteins cause the allergy. Okay. The lactose intolerance is from an intolerance of not having a lactase enzyme to digest the lactose in the milk. Okay. But I agree with you. There's other, all these other factors that go into this because we see that there's a dairy farm in, um, in Oklahoma near, near Tulsa and Claremore that have mostly grass fed cows that do the cheese, they do the milk, they sell raw milk. So grass milk, grass fed milk, raw milk, which is going to be hopefully grass fed in this particular place that it is, is going to be better options. And I find that we don't have the same issues. Now, if you have a true milk allergy, so you have a true allergy to the protein in the milk, you're not going to be able to do a lot of those dairies. But we also find that if you have a true um, milk issue, if you, if you take in milk that has other bacteria in it that's healthy for you, like in a yogurt or something, sometimes you don't have those issues. And so... Um, I think overall that uh, I agree on the milk issue. It's not always about milk. It's about where does that, where's, where are you getting the milk from? The quality, what I would call the quality of milk. And what's interesting, so I, I'm not a big advocate of cow's milk most of the time, but I will make an exception depending on the person. Right. But I only make the exception if they are, if they are, if it's grass fed organic. That's mm -hmm. the two highest. And I would pick grass fed over organic first and then go down the line. It depends. But right. Yes, and Especially whole milk. If you know grass where fed it's whole, from, grass right? fed whole milk because you're gonna get going gonna going to get good omega-3s fatty acids in this so we'll talk about so if you have anything else to say about milk because i'm going to talk about no, i know i just she said excited. great wonderful and i don't know how any of y'all are going to y'all i need to act, sound less oklahoma gonna that's okay y'all isn't it ain't, that's okay that's it's okay right. but if i don't know how any of you guys are going to want to Drink milk after she explained <laughs> it that way. I'm just thinking of the pink tinged milk and thinking, oh my goodness, that's no, that. I don't drink right. milk. I, I I do eat ice cream on occasion and I do like heavy cream, but I get organic grass fed heavy cream. I get grass fed butter. I use that. I put it in my coffee. It is the best. If you if I haven't made you coffee and you like coffee, I'm just saying, 
She does make good coffee. I do make good coffee. Yes. And I like coffee, so. Yes. So we're talking about healthy fats. So yeah. when you're talking about whole milk, you're talking about whole, the grass-fed, grass-finished milks, the butters. Those are a couple of sources that, you know, the are good sources of healthy good fats. fats. Yes, those are good sources. Those are animal sources. Another great animal source of healthy omega-3 fatty acids. No, so not only the, is grass-fed dairy going to carry the omega-3s, which are anti-inflammatory, health beneficial fats that actually reduce placking in your blood. It's going to put that balance in. It's also going to give you something called conjugated linoleic acid, which is also helpful for being anti-inflammatory. CLA. Yes, it's very good for you. So it has all these other health benefits. Another source is going to be grass-fed beef, right? And any, and not just dairy, but sheep's milk, goat's milk. Those are things, especially if they're grass-fed, and typically they are going to be very, very beneficial in that. Now, the thing with fats is we don't have to eat as much fat as we do other things to get the calories we need. So it is going to be a smaller amount. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to eat a pound of butter a day, but you can eat a little bit of butter, and it's going to give you, um, like for the morning, I will eat, I call it a fat coffee. I put heavy whipping cream, grass-fed, and, heavy, and, and then grass-fed butter. I whip it up. I put vanilla, and that's my breakfast in the morning, typically with but a not vanilla coffee. with sugar in. No, it. it's just vanilla extract. Okay, I yes. just wanted to. I don't do in. sugar. I don't. I don't do sugar in my coffee. Okay. I try not to do sugar otherwise. Yes, because we yes. are not made to eat sugar. And not refined so that's sugar. The yes, refined sugar. So that yes. that's going to be the topic of another one of our talks when we're talking about you know insulin resistance and those types of things, but. When we're talking about fat, one of the things that you can do to help balance out your blood sugar, right, when we're talking about insulin resistance, is to consume good, healthy fats. fats. Absolutely. So it is going to be balanced. If we eat all carbohydrates, which we can talk about the types of carbohydrates, we need these good fats and proteins to balance the blood sugar out. So right. with omega-3, with the essential fatty acids, so we're getting those through... Um, grass-fed dairy, grass-fed beef, um, other animals that have um, that produce milk that are going to be grass-fed. So those are all going to be good sources of animal sources of essential fatty acids. Another one is going to be salmon or cold water fish, anchovies. They're going to have some. They're going to have omega-3 fatty acids that are anti-inflammatory. Now, of the essential fatty acids, there's omega-6, 3, and 9 that we typically talk about. Olive oil is going to be a good source of omega-9, um, some maybe some 6s. Most vegetable oils are going to be omega-6s, and that can be actually pro-inflammatory even if it's um, something that we need because we eat too much omega-6s. So we really want, with omega-3, so I'll tell you with essential fatty acids, let me kind of make it simple. There are three, but two that we focus on, omega-3s and omega-6. We need a balance of omega-3s and omega-6s. It really should be eating them in a one-to-one -one ratio. I should be eating as much omega-3 fatty acids as omega-6s. The problem is, we even though it's an essential fatty acid we need, we eat so many foods that have omega-6 fatty acids in it. And a lot of Americans eat five to 25 times more omega-6 fatty acids than we do omega-3 fatty acids. Wow. And then it, what it does is it shifts production of something called arachidonic acid that is pro-inflammatory in our body. It causes a cascade of things that happens that are inflammatory that can cause high blood pressure. It can cause um, um heart disease, mm -hmm. Though, all of those things that are related to inflammation. And so for my people who drink a lot of milk out there, we won't talk about who they are. It also can and they have low milk supply. And they have in low milk supply. And they have a little bit of high blood pressure. We mm -hmm. won't talk about who they are. It could be because you're taking too many pro-inflammatory fats in your diet. So if right. you even shifted to something like a grass-fed milk, it may be something like... So what are what some omega-6s so you can give Canola people some oil, examples? Canola um, oil. All of the nuts and seeds that you eat are going to have omega-6s. Pumpkin seeds, um, almonds, all of those. All of the other plant-based oils and fats are typically going to have omega-6s. Even if you eat non-grass-fed um, meats and things like that, 
mm. they're going to have omega sixes in there. Okay. So we want to shift that. So some plant sources of good fats that are omega threes are going to be flax seed, uh, walnuts, chia seeds, hemp seeds. Um, I know there's some more, but I can't think of them right now. The thing is this though. So the form that the plants have have to go through all of these um, turnovers to be able to get to the form that we absorb into our cells. If we okay. eat cold water, if we eat cold water fish like salmon, a good source because we don't want too much mercury. I know it's complicated. That comes in directly. Our cells utilize that directly. So when we have all of these other things, if you're stressed out, if you don't have enough B vitamins, if you don't have enough zinc, you don't have enough magnesium, your conversion from alpha linoleic acid, which is a plant-based omega-3, to EPA or DHA mm -hmm. is going to be reduced hmm. significantly. So you almost have to eat 25 times more of the, of the ALA to get all of the omega-3s for our bodies to absorb sometimes it depends okay so, there's, so that's why you were talking about if you have a vegan diet that it can be more difficult it can be more difficult to get yes fats vegan diets it's more difficult to get fats as well as b12 and some of the other nutrients so when you're talking about those cold water fish that would be low in mercury that's going to be like the smaller fish right like smaller, your anchovies mackerel, your mackerels yes to be like honest, um, unless you live in an area where you can get that readily and it's, it makes sense and it's not a lot of mercury, it's really hard to find. A good quality fish oil supplement is almost it's essential now in our culture, and that's worldwide. It's unfortunate. It's not you know 100%, but I'm going to say 80% easy of us need a good omega-3 supplement. Um, to be able to supplement in a supplement to supplement our diet because and then you want to make sure that you're actually getting a sustainable good source um, absolutely of your um, supplement as well right yes because if it's not processed appropriately it can have be processed with chemicals that can be transferred to you can which they don't have to list on the bottle um, so there was a while with baby formula that was added DHA the problem was that it used um, certain gases and things that would did not have to be listed on the formula so the baby is getting you know the effects of that as well oh, wow. while getting DHA the best way would if possible and hopefully we can be that make that possible is breastfeeding and getting it through the mother because you don't have to process anything to get them to DHA or add anything is in the milk naturally if the mother right. has enough to be you know that's going to be a part of that as well so DHA is very important for eye development, brain development in those very early, you know, is the EPA that we have is anti-inflammatory. It's going to help with skin. It's going to help with uh, making sure that our cardiovascular system. So you're talking about heart attacks and strokes, which are the number one killer. Listen to me, people. Cardiovascular disease is the number one, without a doubt, for men and women way up here, killer in the United States and across the world. And we're not focusing on that. We're focusing on other things that are killing people, but that's not killing people at a higher rate than these other things. And so, you know, we have to look at those things with, mm -hmm. um, with, with our omega-3 fatty acids. But, we, but so my recommendation for patients is getting animal sources and getting plant sources. Okay. And Donia mentioned avocados. Those don't have necessarily the essential, but they have other fats in there that the polyunsaturated fats, coconuts, coconut actually has saturated fat, which is it is good for you. Plant based fats almost all the time are great for you. We just have to make sure we balance them out. Hmm. Okay. So that's what we wanted to talk to y'all about fats. Fats. Good fats. Fats don't make you fat unless fat you eat the wrong yeah, fats and you that. ate too much. Yes, because we got away even with that as a country, right? We started making everything low, low fat. fat. Low fat this and low fat that, you know, and then we put chemicals in them instead to make them fit, to make them taste good because the fat is what the fat is what tastes good in the first place so we remove that so then we have to replace that with chemicals that are yummy and so then you have you know it's 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 a cascade that we don't need and really the fats aren't what are making us fat it's the refined sugar the simple carbs 
those or are the refined fats can make us fat or refined fats so that would be when you say that are you speaking of um canola oil that and uh what what was the big thing when like 10 years ago the trans fats that were in yes. like um everything Do they still put and trans fat in so trans yes trans fats can be a thing so this is when yes so that's the other um another issue with trans fats trans fats we shouldn't be eating other processed high refined fats Hmm. Yeah. So if you're eating processed packaged foods all of the time that has any kind of fat in it, I guarantee they have bad fats in there. And, and I guarantee if you're not eating salmon, grass-fed beef, grass-fed dairy, sheep's milk dairy, goat's milk dairy, walnuts, chia seeds, and I this is not even in people's vocabulary. So I know you guys aren't eating these. Now, what's the other thing? Leafy greens will have a little bit, mm -hmm. right, in there too. So, leafy greens. But will most have of us don't eat enough mm -hmm. of those either. Right? Leafy greens, like Meg, what are we talking about? It has everything. Every time we talk about a nutrient, we say leafy greens. Mm -hmm. So that so plant based with animal to me, I like a plant based with a side of animal. Yes, a small amount of animal. It doesn't yes. have to be a ton, right? Yeah. You're you're. You should mostly be getting these plants in, and that should be your green leafy vegetables. And then a carb, carbs aren't all bad. A complex carb is going to be That's good vegetables. for you. And vegetables are complex carbs, right? But you Not can, a donut. Not a donut. Or ice cream. Yes. So when you talk about getting fat like, ice cream, you're getting all that sugar. Oh my goodness. You can have like the wild rice is getting, wild rice isn't even... Um, rice. It is it's not a, a grain. It's a grass, not yes, a grain. Which yes. I did not know. I learned that a few years ago. It's actually very good for Just you. Just like some things are seeds instead of grains too. Mm -hmm. Like quinoa and so so you know, and there's there's some little But if get... you're gonna do like a bread, because we like breads in this country, you wanna make sure that you're getting a whole grain, you know organic organic sprouted is even better sprouted things and so you know the other thing that i hear from people is that well these things are expensive it is so is medication and yes. being in the hospital and not being able to walk that. and breathe and talk yes. and i'm telling you like we don't invest enough in those things we we right. we would rather have a louis vuitton purse right you know I mean? and so when you're talking about like old people are some of my favorite folks my grandma used to say and many people's grandmas used to say you are what you eat but they knew what they were talking about because you are what you eat. You and really when you're are. talking Literally. about, you were saying we were going to do a talk on the diseases of civilization. The reason that we have diseases of civilization are because of when the industrial food revolution, isn't that what it's called? In yes, the it's industrial like revolution. That. Yes, that's when like, all of the processed and refined things started coming in and we They're started producing changing food. our diets. We got away from breastfeeding. We went to formula. We felt like we knew better how to put these nutrients in. We got, you know, synthetic nutrients. We're enriching everything. It's we're not how we were created. breaking everything down to where it's the whitest and the softest and all of those things. Those things are not good for your mouth. They're not good for your teeth. You're not getting the nutrients from them the way that you're supposed to. So all of those things, which we will also talk about. But when you're talking about fats, you really want to, you know, get it straight from the source. Get small amounts and get them from your plants. A little bit of animal, but the animal that you get it from, you really want to spend that extra so that you get a good product. So that you can get that grass fed grass finished organic product or local product where you know the farmer because it costs money for them to pay to get that organic signature seal. seal and if you know that they're doing everything organic because you have relationship with them and you know how they are processing their animals and that they are grass fed and grass finished and you can trust that source then that's going to be a better source than even buying organic from the grocery store Yes, absolutely. So, and the farmers around here are pretty straightforward with how they process things. And mm -hmm. so, there's some great dairies. There's some great, um, and just ask them. There's gonna, you know, the farmers market is gonna be shut down. And with, you know, with the pandemic, it is, 
a little different, but there there's resources, and we we should probably get together some resources and show you know and talk oh, about yeah, those we can too. Talk about, there's a lot here. There's a lot. I we're fortunate in Oklahoma. We are. We're very fortunate. There's some great local ones. I mean, uh, what's that place? Is it Grogs? Grog Screen Barn. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. one. And then Holistic Homestead. There's a bunch. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you Schwan's can... Schwann's Dairy in Claremore is the one that mm-hmm. has the... Um, you can start researching those those things and just find out. There's like, you know, we're on Facebook and there's Instagram. There's so many places. There's co-ops mm-hmm. that sell meat and produce. There's other places that... And they're all um, going to be... You can pick between organic and conventional. They, it's just straightforward. And I really... And overall, if you use them consistently, it's less expensive than going to the grocery store. Yes. And then you're getting local food and locally sourced food If I'm going to spend money... Well. I was going to say, yes. You're putting it into the community. But if I'm going to spend money on quality things, I'm going to be a snob about... It's going to... Really food... Yes. It should be. It really should be one of them. Yes, for you and for your family because, you know, you're raising humans and you want to keep those medical bills down and keep your immune system up, right, in a pandemic era. We all want to be healthy and have healthy, strong immune systems, and this is how you're going to get them, you know, getting those green leafy vegetables and making sure that you're getting those good fats, you know, in you so that your body can be can be strong, so... We will come see y'all next Friday yes. with another topic. Have fun getting your healthy fats and learning about all of the things. And thank you guys for joining us. All right. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. Hold on, buddy. Uh,